Good morning, it is 4 a.m. Saturday morning and it's time to finish packing the trucks for the farmers markets. <laughs> All right, so you can see behind me, I have uh, four of our five box trucks and a trailer there and another trailer there. Now on Friday mornings, I pull some items out of the cooler and pack them in the truck for Saturday ahead of time, just because it's so much to pack on Saturday mornings, I'd have to get up at 2.30 or 3 a.m. to get it all in there. So it's nice to have a chunk of it done on Friday. So it, on Saturday morning, all I have to worry about is corn and green beans. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it still takes a lot of time to uh, put it into six different trucks. We don't have a whole lot left in the cooler to get out today. Just uh, green beans and some sweet corn in the back there. So let's get these things rolled out and into the trucks. If you've never seen this before, this is a corn disease. It grows out of the top of ears of sweet corn. And actually in Mexico, this is a delicacy called uh, weed tlacochi. And you know, the, the stuff looks like a brain growing out of the top of the sweet corn. But uh, down there, you know, it's known as uh, the Mexican truffle. And if you saute this stuff up with uh, onions and garlic and sweet chilies, it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. I have yet to try it, but we have a customer in Columbus who loves this stuff. So we always try to be sure to bring him a couple ears of corn smut. All right, now that I have some of the corn and the beans out, I can get the uh, Worthington truck right here finished up before uh, Michael, the guy that's gonna be running the market for me today, uh, he shows up here around 5.15. So let's get the corn and beans on the Worthington truck so we can get him on the road on the way to Columbus, and then we'll have about a half hour to finish up the other trucks. Once we get the corn brought up to the box truck on the pallet, we have to manually slide it off the pallet and into position in the box truck. There's not really an easy way to do that. So you just gotta manhandle it and get it in there. Today, we're only gonna put about 20 tubs of corn in here. The normal day is 35, 40 tubs, but we are way short on corn. So I'm just dividing everything up and giving everybody a little bit of it. So at least we have some at each market. So 20 tubs in here, and then about 10 or 15 tubs in the other trucks. Next, we got the green beans to load up here. This truck gets 12 bushels of green beans. All right, we got our 12 green beans in the truck, our 20 tubs of corn in the truck. This truck is just about ready to go, but not quite. A few more items and I'll have it finished up. So here's some stuff my son grew. Um, he grows some okra and some kale we used to grow kale but uh i let him kind of take over that job 
because I was tired of messing with it. And I have never grown okra. That's one of his specialties. So it's not very much, but uh, there's always a few people that really appreciate having these items at Worthington. Alrighty, final item to load are the cantaloupe and watermelon. I know it looks like all cantaloupe the watermelon are down underneath. We are actually almost finished up with cantaloupe season, so they're kind of getting small and there are very few. So we got uh, four bins ready to go. And this is a look at yesterday's watermelon pick. Not bad. They're a little on the small side, but uh, we got about 10 or 12 bins picked there yesterday. That'll last us through Labor Day. And I just heard Michael, my employee, who's running uh, the Columbus Market today. He just pulled in. So let's get these cantaloupes and watermelons in the truck and get him on the road. One of the most important items, the money box. Without the money box, there is no market. So, let's uh, get the money box in the truck. And we have two credit card machines there for taking plastic, which is a definite must in today's marketplace. All right, just a quick rundown on everything else we have here in the box truck that's going to Worthington. We already talked about the corn and beans. That's what we just loaded at uh, about 4.30 this morning here on Saturday. We have a few bushels of eggplant. We have a cooler full of homemade pico de gallo salsa. We have cucumbers, zucchini, peppers on the bottom stack there. Plenty of extra empty tubs for stocking things and prepping things and um, getting prepared before the busy rush comes. And way in the back, and you can't see them, there's about 50 boxes of tomatoes buried in the corner. Of course, we have to have our market tents. We have all our bags. We have our certified scales for weighing all the tomatoes. We have bag racks, all kinds of different assortments of sizes and types of plastic bags for bagging up the produce. And back here, we have quart containers. Quart containers are used for selling the tomatoes and beans in small quantities for people to just grab off the table. And finally, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we got Joel's uh, garlic. He's the one that also takes care of the salsa. So he's got salsa and garlic on here and our sweet and hot pepper relish up there on the shelf. Last and certainly not least are our secondhand tomatoes, our scratch and dent tomatoes. We actually call them our cosmetically challenged tomatoes. And these can be purchased for like uh, a quarter of the price of the number one tomatoes that we set out and sell. We have one truck on the road. Oh, five more to go. Still got a lot of work ahead of me. So many of you may be wondering who follow the farm vlog, why haven't I had a vlog in quite some time? Well, I kind of knew this would happen. When the heat of the season came on, I was just gonna get so busy that I would always forget to have my camera on me. And it gets to be a pain to have a camera running and trying to film the process of the daily farming life on a vegetable farm. Yes, it could be done, but this season has not turned out the way we expected. So there was many days where I thought about it when I was walking out of the house and decided to leave the camera in the house just because things have not went well. This is probably our third, second or third worst season in 20 years of produce farming. So it's mainly because of all the heavy rains in May and June um, and then severe drought for us after that. We basically went six or eight weeks with no rain whatsoever. So that just killed us. Now I have the means to irrigate some of our high value crops that we raise on the raised beds with plastic mulch and drip tape, like an irrigation line. I can irrigate those at the root level. Now as far as sweet corn, pumpkins, and green beans, I don't have any overhead um, traveler type 
irrigation reels to pump water out into the field long distances to irrigate those. So we rely on the natural rainfall and we have not had near enough this year. Fortunately, the last week or so, we've had a couple small quarter inch rains that have helped us survive, but it has been tough this year. So there was just a lot of days where filming what we had would not have done our farm justice compared to a normal farming year. So I do plan on walking you guys around and showing you some of our crops and how poorly they did this year. And I'll kind of compare what we normally have to what we have this year. So you guys can actually see the devastation of some of the flooding and drought in combination and what it has done to our farming operation this year. One effect the uh, heavy rains and drought had was small watermelons. Now there are some large, normal size looking watermelon, but for the most part, you know, they're 20, 30% smaller on average. So, you know, we've got a lot of little guys like this that we have to discount the price, you know. There's a pretty normal size one. You know, there's there's some nice jumbos out there. And you know, this is bug damage from not spraying. We don't like to spray pesticides. So, you know, cucumber beetles are gnawing on the rind. So sometimes you'll see that. Uh, we do have organic controls to keep those from uh, getting out of hand, but you know, they don't work as well as conventional pesticides. You know, over here we have our tomato boxes. Uh, these are normally all full of tomatoes. So, you know, we're, we're a little light on tomatoes right now. You know, it's August 24th and we just now started picking our field tomatoes. Normally we've been picking for a couple weeks. So I'll give you a close look here of uh, some of our field tomatoes. This is our first pick of field tomatoes here. Not a lot, you know, we probably got 20 tubs there. They still have to be sorted and packed into uh, boxes. These are all empty boxes and all these tomatoes will be put in these boxes. But they look really nice this year. And we're pretty cleaned out right now. You know, normally this entire wall is full of tomatoes, but they're all loaded in trucks ready for farmer's markets today. These are uh, some greenhouse tomatoes that are, you know, staged to ripen for next week's sales. So Friday mornings is our big picking day. That's when we have our biggest crew in. That's when we have our biggest harvest of everything. And we get it all packed up and put in the cooler and ready for Saturday morning markets, which is our biggest day of the week by far. And there's a lot of things to prepare in these box trucks before they can head out to a farmer's market. And I'll give you a, a little look into our tote. We call it our goodie tote. You know, it has all of our knickknacks in it for being able to run a farm stand at a farmer's market around Columbus. All right, here's what one of our totes looks like. And I'll just point out some of these items, then we'll get a closer look. Um, we have tablecloths for our tables. And of course we have our tents and a bag rack. Paper towels for clean up relish and salsa messes and wet wipes. Extra batteries for the scales because you never know when the scales might die. And that would be a bad thing. Crackers for our samples. Uh, we have a couple different signs we hang up. Here's one that says non-GMO sweet corn and produce. In the bottom here we have one of our banners. Everybody hangs a banner at their stand. And it just says Wish Well Farms, fresh as you wish, with the Wishing Well, our logo. And then within the big tote, we have this mini tote. Okay, medium sized tote because inside the medium tote, there's a mini tote. But in here, we have a folder with all the price cards for the sales that day. You know, it's got all of our signs and posters and price cards. And then we have uh, you know, some clothes pins for hanging signs on the tents. Everybody's got a little first aid kit. We have spoons in here for giving out samples of relish and salsa. And then we have this little mini tote where we have some business cards, um, a notepad for taking orders, extra credit card tape for the credit card machine, tape for taping up new price cards, and a marker for making up new price cards. So there's a quick look at the tote with some of the items that we have to have at farmer's markets to operate a farm stand.
just about ready for a sunrise. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful Saturday morning for farmers markets. It's like 55 degrees right now. All right, so I got four trucks on the road and one more here that goes out in about a half hour just to the local farmers market here in Bell Fountain called the Logan County Farmers Market. And the trailer here that goes to our Marysville stand. It's a standalone market. It's a place that we rent in a parking lot in Marysville at a busy intersection. So uh, this one goes out three days a week during the weekdays and on Saturdays to Marysville. So this trailer gets pulled into the parking lot, unhooked, we move the truck out of the way, and we put a table up right here in the front. There's a table, and we will load that puppy up with tomatoes and syrup and relish, and all kinds of good stuff. This stand stays really busy, so it gets loaded pretty good. But this time of year, things are slowing down a little bit, and since we were short on corn for the farmer's markets, I bought some neighboring farms corn down in Urbana called Michael Farms. On my trailer, I can put whatever I want on there. At the farmer's markets where the trucks go, it has to be my produce. So I made sure my corn went to the farmer's markets and then I supplement others corn if I'm short for our trailer. Back in the cooler, these are the display crates for the trailer. We just need to fill these all up, top them off, and get them on the trailer. All right, the trailer is officially ready to go. All stocked up with zucchini, peppers, and cucumbers, fresh picked green beans, red potatoes, Vidalia onions, red onions, cantaloupes and watermelon, sweet, juicy Pennsylvania peaches, black plums, plenty of sweet corn ready to put out on display and packed neatly inside the trailer and lots of juicy ripe tomatoes. Well, it is now seven o'clock. Every truck is either on the road on the way to Columbus or at Columbus setting up already for the farmer's markets. And boy, oh boy, do we have a beautiful sunrise today. Gosh, just makes me want to go camping and backpacking. It's beautiful out here. Anyway, we got the last truck and trailer loaded and ready to go. Just waiting for Amanda to show up and she will be on the road. <laughs> 